mercy endures forever. Tell me. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures good and your mercy endure it forever. Come on, say it. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Say it again. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation we worship Amen. We worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth is, if you don't have the spirit, you can't worship him. Hallelujah. God is so good. He said, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. So that means the dog can go, Woo! He got breath, ain't that right? But he can't worship the Lord. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I thank God that we have the Spirit of God and we're able to worship Him. Yes. Father, we thank you for this day, for what you've done, for what you're doing. For your love, your kindness, your tender mercy. Blot out our transgressions, remove our iniquities, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless this service on today, God. Let it go according to your will and glory. Bless all that is said and done. Give us a word for your people, God, to strengthen them. Encourage them to live for you, to love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. You may be seated. Clap your hands to the Lord. Give the Lord some praise up in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. Amen. Why is he good all the time? Because you need his mercy. And his mercy <laughs> endureth forever. That's why he's good all the time, you know. Y'all didn't know that, did you? God is good all the time for his mercy. And you need it every day. I need it every day. Ain't that right? I need God's mercy every day. Every day I need his mercy. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank God for the ones that can make it out today. Being here. God bless your pastor. Good to see you. Amen. My pastor, 60 years old. Young. 60 years young. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Somebody say thank God for Jesus. God is good. All the time. Praise God. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, may Israel say, where would I be? Amen. A lot of us, amen, all of us would be in a terrible condition had not been for the Lord on our side. And we look around the world and we see the terrible things and the different things that are going on in the earth. I mean, it got bad when you can't get French fries and it come out cold and people want to shoot you. You know, things are going crazy. Ain't things going crazy? Things are going crazy now. So used to complain, but now they shoot you. So y'all be careful. You better be praying up. Be prayed up. Ain't that right? Amen. The police went mad and they were shooting folk. Now the folks shooting folk. We need to pray. Amen. The devil is loose on the earth. For he knows he only has a short time. He's loose and he, he'll get into people. You don't know what kind of attitude people have. You don't know what kind of day people had. Amen. So you be nice all the time. It, it pays to be a Christian. Amen. To be nice. Amen. Don't fuss. Don't talk back. Somebody pull in your parking lot, pull in your parking space. You just back off or pull off. Let them have it. Amen. I mean, don't shoot them. Let them have it. I mean, let them have the spot. Amen. Somebody say, let them have the spot. Go on about your business. Amen. Somebody cut in front of you. Let them go. Just say, thank you, Jesus, and keep on going. Amen. 
Somebody say, praise the Lord. They might be mad at something. And take it out on you. Be careful, amen. People high on all kind of stuff. Just people high these days don't look like they high, but they high. People high on themselves. People high on ignorance. People high on the devil. Y'all understand? So praise God. Let us open our Bibles today. Praise God. And we're going to start out in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. We're going to be talking about today, don't lose your testimony. Don't lose your testimony. Look at somebody, if you can see them, and say, don't lose your testimony. We go through tests, we go through trials, amen, and different things come our way, pressures of life, amen, but don't lose your testimony. Praise the Lord. It's very valuable, the testimony. Amen. Somebody says, very valuable, my testimony. Praise the Lord. And have it, sir, read. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes, you'll be a witness. Somebody say, I'm a witness. When you are witness, then that's your testimony. This particular testimony we're talking about is the testimony of your salvation, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation is chapter 1, Revelations 1 and 2, Revelations 1 and 2. Don't lose your testimony because the devil is... As a roaring lion, he's seeking whom he may devour. The devil wants to kill, steal, and to destroy. Amen. Some people are still playing around with life and don't know how serious it is. And life is very serious. This is the opportunity that you have, amen, to live for the Lord, to serve the Lord, and worship God. Because when life ends, and that's it. You have no more opportunity to get it right. Somebody say, get it right now. Praise God. That's why you need a testimony. Praise God. And when you have a testimony, the devil wants to steal your testimony. Somebody say, hold on. Don't lose your testimony. Amen. Revelations 1 and 2 says, Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So John had a record. He bared record testimony. He's a witness of the testimony of Jesus Christ. He knew of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, you have that testimony. That's your testimony. Jesus saved me. Jesus is alive. Jesus lives. Revelation 1 9 says. 1 and 9? Yes. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the owl that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Read it again. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the owl that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he was in this condition because of his testimony. The testimony was that Jesus is alive. John testified, he bare record, that Jesus was alive. You know, the Jews, amen, didn't like to hear the fact that Jesus was alive. Amen. They didn't like to hear the fact that Jesus was the Son of God. They crucified him because he claimed to be the Son of God. They said, because you claim to be the Son of God, you make yourself equal with God. That's why they crucified him. Praise God. And John had this testimony that Jesus was risen from the dead. That should be your testimony. When you're saved, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you, ha you should have that testimony, that witness, that record inside of you that Jesus is alive. Amen. When you have that record in, you can't nobody take the record from you. They can crucify you. They can, they, can, uh, they can stone you to death, but they can't take that testimony. John, they try to kill John. Amen. They couldn't kill him, so they put him on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. Because he had a testimony. Somebody say, do you have a testimony? 
Amen. So he had a testimony, praise God, and he didn't lose his testimony regardless of what John went through. Amen. Regardless of the pressure that they had John up under, John held on to his testimony. That's why he was on the island. Are you holding on to your testimony? Amen. Sometimes uh, the testimony is saying that Jesus is Lord. I'm saved. Amen. Sometimes we we'll go on the jobs and we won't even mention that we're saved. We won't even mention that Jesus has changed our lives. Amen. And the devil steals your testimony. Amen. And he makes you shame or makes you shy. You got to be bold when somebody saved your life. Ain't that right? You have to be bold when somebody delivered you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody pull you out the fire. Go tell somebody. Amen. You see somebody else in the fire. You go tell them and you go warn them. I know a man that can pull you out of the fire. Amen. But the devil want to put you to pressure. He want to put you through some hard times, some rough times. Praise God that you lose. Amen. Your confidence. Somebody say, don't lose your confidence. Don't lose your confidence. Praise God. Matter of fact, let's turn to that scripture right quick. Praise God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, amen. So the devil pressures you. He put pressure on you. Somebody say pressure. You know what pressure looks like. It looks like a bill sometime, amen. It looks like a spouse sometime that ain't acting right. It looks like children that's not acting right sometime, amen. The pressures of life. Somebody say the pressures of life. Amen. The worries and the cares of life and things get on, on you because sometimes your children can act crazy. They can act a fool. Can't they act a fool? Ain't nobody got children out there. Amen. Your husband, your wife, your spouse can act a fool sometime and pressure. Amen. Just thinking, just life itself can cause pressure on you. You know, a lot of us, sometimes we're listening to some, all of these news reports. Sometimes you have to leave news alone because it's a lot of pressure on you just looking at how crazy people have become in the earth. Amen. Don't feel your, uh, don't eat a whole lot of that food. Uh, don't take a whole lot of that in, li listening to all this and all of that and people killing people. Get Listen, spare yourself some of this stuff. Amen. If you don't have to need, if you don't need to get these reports, spare yourself. Don't let it get in your spirit. Amen. Protect your spirit. Amen. From the crazy things that's going on in the world. Hear what I'm saying, somebody. Amen. You have it. Hebrews 10 and 30, 10, 35 through 37. What does it say? Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Don't cast away your confidence. Be sure that you're saved. Amen. You have need of patience. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Look at somebody say, my change is coming. Amen. My change is coming. Praise God. Don't let the devil fool you that it's going to be this way always. The devil always gets people, he have people uh, to destroy themselves because they're thinking it's going to be this way always. The devil is a great deceiver. Amen. The devil can deceive you for real. Amen. And he has help because the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Your heart, if your heart hasn't been changed, if your heart is not for God, even your very heart can deceive you. You know, be like, oh, 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 I know this is right because I feel it in my heart. Your heart can mess you up. You need to line up with the word of God. Somebody say, stick with the word. Don't cast away your comfort because confidence because there's a great reward. Somebody say, wait on your reward. Wait on the Lord to bless you, praise God. So he said you have need of patience to wait, praise God, to trust God because at the end time, the devil going to put the people through a whole lot of stuff. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The devil's going to try to drag you through the mud. But hold on to your confidence. When you hold on to your confidence, you won't lose your testimony. Somebody say, I don't plan to lose my testimony. I'm going to hold on. I know you don't plan to lose it. So I want to give you confidence. I want to give you strength today. Amen. That you will hold on to your testimony. Somebody will say, well, I hold on to my testimony. It don't matter what, I, what, what happened to me, what I go through. I'm going to hold on to my testimony. Amen. You need God to help you hold on to your testimony. Amen. Your testimony, what is your testimony? Jesus saved. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Amen. Somebody say, Jesus is the Savior of the world. That should be your testimony. You should be a witness. You should be bearing record. Amen. Matter of fact, that's what the word testimony means. It's, to re it's a record. It's a report. It's a witness. I'm witnessing for Jesus. Amen. I'm bearing record that he's alive. Amen. I've come to report to you that Jesus lives because he lives inside of me. Praise God. Peter, praise God. Amen. He told Jesus, he said, listen, Jesus, I'll never deny you. Amen. I'm going to always say that you are 
who you are. Amen. And the pressure came on Peter so rough and so bad and so hard that a little girl asked him, what's your testimony? He said, I, I don't know the man. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So pressure can come upon you. Don't get, all, don't get all big and bold. You need Jesus. Somebody say, I need Jesus. I need Jesus to help me hold on to my testimony. Ain't that right? So when you're going through, you got to hold on to your testimony. And you got to trust God to fix it for you. Trust God to work it out for you. Revelation 6 and 9. Trust God to help you. Somebody say, he going to help me. When you have the witness on the inside of the witness, now we have a witness of Jesus Christ, not just that we know that he, ro he rose from the dead. That's not the only witness we have. We have a speaking Jesus. We have a Jesus on the inside of us that talks to us, amen? He can talk to you verbally or he can talk to you through the scripture or however he talks to you. He can send a word through the prophet, but we have a Jesus on the inside that talks to us, amen? We have a witness because we know he lives in us. Revelation 6 and 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. You may die for Jesus Christ. Are you willing to die? See, we're living in the last days. See, we've been, we done had it real good over here in this country. We done had it easy in this country compared to some of the other countries. Some other countries, you once you confess Jesus is Lord, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, your whole family throw you out. That's one strike against you. Amen. And then they find you in the neighborhood, they're subject to kill you for your testimony. John was on the Isle of Patmos for his testimony. You testify all day long over here. Amen. Praise God. Somebody may make it, get me get mad at you. Praise God. They may fire you. If they fire you, you can go sue them. Hear what I'm saying, somebody. But we have an experience, praise God, that it's things that's going to come upon the earth, praise God, when you can't even testify in this country. Amen. If God don't do something about it, that Jesus is Lord of your life. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Praise God. Somebody say, praise God. Amen. Now, Revelation 6 and 9, Revelation 12 and 11. Amen. Don't lose your testimony. Amen. Praise God. You get in the fight, you get a bloody nose, but don't lose the fight. Amen. Anybody ever been in a fight before? Don't lose the fight. Amen. Get a bloody nose. Do what you got to do to win the fight. I'm talking about back, back in the hood. You know, you, you can't let the homeboys see you lose the fight. Y'all remember how it was? When we was growing up, back before they were shooting people, amen, you get in a fight and you just fought, fought, fought until you won, amen, don't lose the fight, amen, you got to have a confidence, I'm going to win, amen, praise God, they may break your leg, but I'm going to win, amen, if my leg broke, he got two legs broke, amen, if my hand ain't no more, his head is gone, you're going to win the fight. Amen. I'm going to defeat the enemy, praise God. I may come out, you know, dragging my leg, but I'm going to win. Amen. I'm going to win the fight because I got confidence in Jesus Christ. Jesus got my back. Somebody say, Jesus got my back. Re uh, Revelation 12 and 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb uh, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. I'm going to win, praise God. They overcame him how? By the blood of the Lamb. Somebody say, by the blood of the Lamb. Now, we're living in the airways now, and the enemy is talking to a lot of people. The enemy is talking to you. I know he's talking to you because he's talking to me. Amen. The enemy is in the airways, and he's trying to convince you of a lot of things right now. We're in those days, amen, that the enemy, his spirit, his words are in the air. He's the prince and the power of the air. The enemy has such control and such power of the air. Me and you could be having a conversation. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Me and you could be having a conversation. I'll say something to you. He could change the words in the air. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The enemy has power in the air. So that's why the Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. You could be talking to sister so-and-so and sound like sister so-and-so cuss you out. She didn't cuss you out. It's just the prince can change the air. He can change the air. He can work with the air. You have to be careful. Amen. Praise God. What the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to steal your confidence. He's trying to steal your faith in God. He's trying to steal your testimony that Jesus is Lord because he wants to be Lord. He wants to rule your life. He wants to reign in your life so he'll speak things in your life. Amen. To steal your confidence, to steal your testimony. Amen. When he steals 
steal your confidence that Jesus is Lord, when he steals your testimony, he's going to defeat you. He's going to take you out. Amen. Somebody say, don't lose your testimony. What's your testimony? Jesus is Lord. Ain't that right? Amen. Somebody say, Jesus is Lord. Uh, you can say, Jesus saved me. That's saying the same thing. Jesus is Lord. He's Savior of the world. That's your testimony. I'm saved. Who saved you? Jesus saved you. It's going to all go back to Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You hear of different people, you, they go to prison and go to prison Christians sometimes. They come back Muslims because of depression. Anybody hear what I'm saying? They go to prison Christians and they come back something else, come back atheists because of the pressure, amen, of life. Amen. There are things that are cause pressure. Your friends can cause pressure on you. Amen. Life can cause pressure on you. A girlfriend, boyfriend can cause pressure on you, but you got to hold on to your testimony. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. He's Lord of my life. He's the Savior of my life, and I'm going to live for him. For God I live, and for God I'll die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Revelation 12 and 17. I won't and, lose my confidence. Go ahead, sir. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, mm. and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The devil want to fight you. He already fighting you, praise God. But he increases the pressure on your life. Amen. When you're not, <laughs> I can't say when you're not fasting, because even when you're fasting, even when you're reading the word, even when you're praying, the devil is still trying to defeat you. Ain't that right? Matter of fact, the more closer you get to God, the more power you get in God, the more power he feels he had to put on you. But you got to hold on to your testimony. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Peter had pressure. Amen. Once he got saved, he got converted. Jesus said, after you've been converted, strengthen your brothers. Amen. Paul, amen, praise God, he had pressure. And all these apostles, amen, were crucified. Amen. The devil increased his pressure on them. The devil ain't going to let you loose because you say I'm a Christian. Matter of fact, he's going to add pressure to you. Somebody say, but hold up to the pressure. Amen. Because at the end, you're going to win. At the end, you got to praise God, a kingdom that you can get in. At the end, praise God, you got a God that you can serve forever. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I might go through now, but I'm not going to go through then. Amen. You might cry then, cry, cry now, but you won't cry later. Ain't that right? Somebody say, I won't be crying later. He's going to wipe all the tears from my eyes because I held on to my testimony. I got to hold on, praise God. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King of King. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the reason I got up this morning. I got to hold on to my testimony. Praise the Lord. The devil tries to bring depression. Anybody ever been depressed? Oppression, depression, different spirits that comes upon you. Uh, every evil spirit that comes upon you comes from the devil, comes from the wicked one. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And the devil send different spirits on you to get you down. Anybody ever been feeling down? Amen. You get down, dope don't even get you up. You know, they medicine, they try to medicate, that won't even get you. You can get to some serious depression, ain't that right? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Depression is a spirit. These things are spirits. There are spirits in the world. Doctor gives them names. He calls them this. He calls them that. But the Bible calls them devils. Doctrines of demons and devils. And these depressions gets on you, praise God. And you don't know how to deal with it, praise God, because, hallelujah, you haven't grown in the word. You haven't been reading the word. You don't even realize that these things are going to come your way, that you're going to face it. Everybody going to face things. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Praise God. People are committing suicide every day. Soldiers are committing suicide every day. People are committing suicide every day, praise God, all because of depression, all because of oppression, all because of things in their life, not knowing if they just wait on God and they trust God, tomorrow going to bring a new day. Ain't that right? The Bible say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Somebody say, why don't you just wait till your morning come? Why don't you just wait till your change come? Somebody say, hold on to your testimony. Ain't that right? You got, to tell, you got to tell your depression, Jesus is Lord. You can't stay here. You got to go now. Listen, I've been dealing with you too long. Get out of me. Yeah. Ain't nobody know what I'm talking about. You got to talk to the devil. Somebody say, what you mean? He talking to you, ain't he? Talk to the devil. Talk back to the devil. Say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, you lying demon. Get out of me. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. He tell you, you ain't going to have enough money to pay your bill. Just say, I ain't worrying about my bill. Jesus got my bill. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ain't that right? Somebody say glory. God's got it. Somebody say God's got it. 
I'm going to hold on my testimony. Ain't that right? When the pressure get, you know, you know, when the pressure get hard and the pressure get, y'all know what pressure is, pressure, 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 pressure. You know you can't have a diamond unless you have pressure. Y'all know how to make a diamond. A diamond has got to be pressed. A diamond is just cold. Y'all know that, right? Cold, cold, you know, cold that you put in the fire and burn. Uh, that's cold. That's what a diamond is. But a diamond, is, a cold has been pressured and pressured and pressured. It turns into a diamond, ain't that right? Anybody hear what I'm saying? A pearl starts out as a little grain of, a grain of sand into the, or just an oyster, whatever that thing is, into his mouth. Ain't that right? It gets into his mouth, amen, and then it's an irritant to him. So there's some chemical in his body begin to cover up that little piece of sand. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Pressure bring great things in your life. Amen. If you know it, if you can just hold on to your confidence. Somebody say God is doing something. Somebody say God is doing something. God is doing something. Amen. Praise God. Revelation 19 and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see Thou do it not. Uh -huh. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. I got a testimony. Read it. Read it. Go ahead. Worship God. I have a testimony. My brothers and sisters in the church got a testimony. Amen. Praise God. I may have the testimony of an apostle, but I don't deserve nobody's worship. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. I don't need nobody to call me daddy. Nobody got to call me father. Hallelujah. Don't bow down and worship me. We only got one king, one Lord, one father of spirits. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I ain't going to get nothing out of you calling me father. I ain't your father. I'm your apostle. I'm your pastor. I'm your bishop. But Jesus, God is your father. Somebody say, God is my father. You don't want me to be your father anyway. I'm too broke up. I'm broke up. I'm messed up. I need help. I got to get on my knees and pray. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I got to give it, I got to get on my knees and cry out to the Father. So the only person that or the only one that don't have to pray is God. The only one got it right is God. Ain't nobody hear what I'm saying. The only one know everything is God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Don't run around here calling no man your father. He can't, he can't father that spirit. Not the spirit that God put in me. God breathed in me. <sighs> Wasn't TD Jakes. God breathed in me. What Noah Roberts? God breathed in me. Hallelujah. See, that, he, that man became a living, so my spirit is related to God. I ain't trying to talk about nobody, but I'm trying to tell you who you're supposed to be worshiping, who you're supposed to be serving, because I can't be. Listen here. Uh, uh, I ain't no, no harm, T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes can't be your father this week and Oral Roberts your father next week. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. God is my father. Jesus said, when you pray, you say, I'm a father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Where you at, Jesus? He's up in heaven. The father is in heaven. Amen. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I have a testimony that Jesus is Lord. Amen. The apostle can get you out of some trouble. Amen. That's good. I appreciate what you do for me, apostle, but I can't bow down to you. The apostle can open doors for me, but I can't bow down to you. Anybody hear what I'm saying? My testimony that Jesus is Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody say, I ain't crazy. I ain't crazy. The Bible says there's no temptation taking you, but that which is common unto men. In other words, the temptation that's tempting me is the same temptation that's tempting you, but it ain't tempting God. That's why he's my father. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus when he comes. You remember the song? He's coming on the cloud. And every eye shall see him. I want to be, be like, like Jesus, Jesus when it comes. Come. I don't want to be like none of y'all. I don't want to be like me. I want I want to be like me. I want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I don't care how famous the person is. I don't care how rich a person is. I don't care how widespread a person is. I still don't want to be like him. I want to be like Jesus. Because I have a testimony that Jesus is Lord. What's my testimony? That he's clean. He's pure. He's a great God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. 
Because, see, I can stand here in your face, talk to you in your face, and in my heart be cussing you out. You don't want to be like me. I won't be like you. Amen. I don't care how you know how you impress with some man. While you talking to that same man, he could be plotting something against you. I don't want to be like you. Can't call you who you ain't. Hallelujah. I'm not gonna give you that kind of glory. Can't give you kind of that kind of status. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Let everybody else do it, but I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I got a testimony of Jesus. I was lost in my sin, and it was no preacher that came into my heart. I was lost in my sin. It was no evangelist that came into my heart, but it was Jesus came into my heart. It was Jesus that saved me. I have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Anybody got a testimony? Somebody say, I got a testimony. First Corinthians, hallelujah. First Corinthians 1 and 6. I'm holding on to my testimony. Amen. Praise God. I'm holding on to my testimony. Somebody say, hold on to your testimony. Jesus is Lord. Amen. He's Lord of Lords. He's King of Kings. You know how sometimes you have a testimony, you know, some lady at the church, or, you know, most of the time it's the lady at the church, and she can cook real good. She's known for her cakes at the church. Oh, so you want to, you want to, you uh, what, what they call it, red velvet, red velvet cake? Oh, no. Everybody know who to go to to get the red velvet cake. She got a testimony. Anybody know what I'm talking about? She got a testimony. Amen. And Lord, don't mess up her testimony. Ain't that right? Don't mess up sister so-and-so testimony. Ain't that right? Don't let another sister that come in with a red velvet competition. She already on that throne. <laughs> it's a fight in the church. <laughs> she don't want to lose her testimony. Ain't that right? Don't you, don't, you know, she see you, uh, she see you walking up there to the bishop with, with a red velvet cake that she didn't make. Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> What's she doing with that cake? Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. So y'all know what testimony is. Come on, somebody. Read the Bible. What's it say? Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The testimony of Christ was what? Confirmed. It was confirmed in you. Somebody say his testimony was confirmed in me. When I heard the word of God, the word of Jesus Christ, the preacher preached to me, amen. The preacher preached the word to me. I received the word and grew in grace. Amen. Praise God. And the preacher came back to check me out to see if I really had it. Somebody say, do you really have it? And then when the preacher came back, he checked it out, and the word was confirmed that God was living in me for real. How do you know that God is living? Because there's a change in your life. Right. Somebody said there's a change in my life. There's a difference in my life. I have the testimony. Listen, before I had the testimony of Jesus Christ, I did what I wanted to do, said what I wanted to say, went where I wanted to went, did all of those kind of things because I didn't have no testimony of Jesus Christ. Only place I couldn't go is where the army said I couldn't go. And the army was letting you go pretty much everywhere when it came to sin. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Hallelujah. But when I got the testimony of Jesus Christ, amen, Jesus came in my life. And Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Father that I'm talking about, said, you can't go there. Right. Y'all understand? Right. The Father began to give me some direction. You can't go there. Don't say that about her. Right. Don't you think that way. I had a testimony. Right. I had a God living in me. A God giving me direction. Praise God. A God bringing correction to my life. Somebody say a father will bring correction to your life. Anybody out there? Is anybody out there? Won't a father bring correction in your life? Ain't that right? A real father going to bring correction. He going to tell you, you can't do it. You can't, but daddy, but you can't do it. But daddy, you can't do it. Now, I, I, I'm saying like that because my, I ain't never had to have that kind of conversation with my daddy. He said one time that was it. Ain't that right? It was a rule in my house. He just looked at you a certain way. That was it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ain't, I can't remember one time getting a whooping. They say he whooped me one time. I can't remember it, but all he had to do is say, that's it. That was it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So I know what authority is. I know when a father says no, he means no. He don't mean you playing around with him. 
Amen. He's a, he's a serious person. To, he's serious when it comes to raising his children. No, boy, I ain't going to tell you no more. He put you in your place. Boy, I ain't going to tell you no more. That's all my daddy would say. Sometimes he didn't even tell you, but he must have thought he told you. And I'd be like, what? He ain't told me. That's how he was. Boy, I ain't going to tell you no more. That was it. I quit everything. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Because authority, amen, was in the Father's voice. Right. Amen. Philippians, praise God, 4 and 13. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I won't lose my testimony. Right. Somebody say, don't lose it. Don't lose your testimony. I don't care how pretty she is. Don't lose your testimony. I don't care how handsome he is. Don't lose your testimony. I'm going to tell y'all something right now. I don't want nobody to say nothing. I'm going to tell you, I'm, don't say nothing, don't say nothing, because I want you to tell on yourself. I think they say the Powerball, the, the lottery thing, what they call it? What they call it? Well, y'all can say something on this part, what they call it? Huh? The Powerball? They tell me the, the Powerball went up to a trillion dollars. The Powerball went up to a trillion dollars, and I'm sure folk lost their testimony. A trillion dollars. And they, oh, I can't let this one go. Ain't played numbers in 20 years. But when it went to that trillion dollars, the temptation came. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all might have played it. Some of y'all watching might have played it. Ain't none of y'all won. It's just like it was the last time you played it. You ain't win. But you got tempted. And you lost your testimony. Things will come to get your testimony. Some of y'all ain't had no testimony. You play every week anyway. I ain't talking to you. Lost that testimony because it went to a trillion dollars. What's a trillion dollars going to do you if you lose your soul? That's right. yeah. What you going to do with a trillion dollars? What you going to do with a trillion dollars? Everybody in Hinesville going to come run you down. Mm -hmm. You're going to have no peace. Uh -huh. Soon as somebody finds out you won, the oh, whole neighborhood, all oh, the neighbors going to be your friends now. Everybody going to knock on the door bringing you cakes. You ain't going to have no peace. Don't move out of Hinesville. We going to follow you. <laughs> You're going to lose your testimony. Anybody hear what I'm saying? If you got a testimony, hold on to it. On. I don't care if it go to three, three, and four, three, three. Don't let that, don't let that devil fool you. He's going to increase the pressure. Whatever the thing is to take your testimony. Somebody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. All right. Let's get back over here. Yeah, Read the Bible. What's it say, sir? Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. I can hold on to this testimony. Because Jesus is going to give me strength. Jesus is going to give me power to hold on. There's a lot going on nowadays in the air, just in the air alone, the spirits that are in the air. Amen. The things that come to convince you to lose your testimony or convince you to do the wrong things. There's a lot going on in the air now. Amen. This is why you see people killing people and people doing what they're doing, seeming like this cr over crazy stuff, because now the devil has increased his pressure on people, and people are doing crazy things. They used to have power to resist, amen. They had a certain level people could resist that power, and they wouldn't do certain things. They wouldn't do foolish things. But now that cap has been taken off, and if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't have the power of God, people are just doing crazy stuff. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Your adversary goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may to devour. The devil wants to kill you. Don't lose your testimony. Somebody say, I can do all things. Through Christ. Christ. Somebody say, I'm going to hold on. Gonna hold Who's going to give you strength? Christ. Jesus. How do you overcome? By the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Who's going to give you strength? Jesus is going to give me strength. Are you going to make it? Somebody say, I'm going to make it. 2 Timothy 1 and 8. Praise God. 2 Timothy 1 and 8. Praise God. The pressures of life. The ways the devil used. 2 Timothy 1 and 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. I'm saved. You own your job? I'm saved. Amen. Amen. 
I'm saved. I mean, you ain't got to go and run around telling everybody you saved. Amen. But when somebody asks you to do something crazy, no, man, I don't do that. I'm saved. Somebody asks you to steal while you're working. I'm saved. I don't, I don't steal. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When somebody asks you, try to bring something to your way, attempting you, well, man, we can get some money for this. We can do it. I'm saved. I don't do that. Amen. Amen. You don't know if that's the, the boss man that set somebody up to test you to see if you're a thief or not. Right. You don't know what's going on. You shouldn't steal anyway, but I'm just trying to tell you. There's tricks out there. Y'all hear me? Oh, yeah. And sometimes people fall for anything. And sometimes your best friend will set you up. Well, you know what I mean, best friend? Y'all hear what I'm saying? You have to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. You can't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. You can't be ashamed of your testimony. I'm saying, I was in the military, praise God, and I told him I was saved. I wasn't ashamed. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Everybody start cussing. I'm just me. This is me. They start cussing in the office. When I went to a new office, they start cussing. I said, listen, we ain't going to, nah, uh I'm saved. We, you know, you change that language. Amen. They'll respect you. I'm sorry, preacher. I'm sorry. Y'all hear me? Amen. I don't know what they're doing these days, but I stood up for my salvation. Amen. They stand up for theirs, don't they? Don't they stand up for their salvation? They'll cuss. They'll tell, tell dirty jokes. They'll say everything. They ain't ashamed of what they do. And you sit there and won't say nothing about the Lord. Uh-uh. Not me. Ain't that right? Somebody said, I told them all. I told them up to chain of command. I would tell them. They had standing there. I said, I'm saved. I told them all. Right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. I wasn't ashamed. Still ain't ashamed. Right. Amen. Amen. I tell all, whoever is, I'm going to tell them. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't feel no pressure about it. Amen. I'm saved. That's just, that's just the end of the subject. I'm saved. That's it. I'm saved. Well, well, well. I'm saved. And they know not to come to you with crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. They know not to come to you with foolish stuff when you let them know you're saved. Right. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I don't need to hear no junk. I'm saved. Praise Amen. God. Somebody say, I have, I have a testimony. My testimony is Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't lose your testimony. Beware that the devil, your adversary, is as a roaring lion. He goes about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you. He wants to steal your testimony. Somebody say, but I'm going to hold on. Hold on to your testimony. Don't lose it. Don't lose your testimony. You hear about Christians, amen, they're serving God, and this week and next week they ain't serving God. Amen. They're coming to church this week. Next week they ain't coming to church. They threw at church. They, they don't want church no more. The devil has stolen their testimony. You got everybody look, look at me. Everybody look at me. Y'all, I hope y'all ain't on your phones. Look at me. Amen. Don't listen to everybody. In church or out of church. Listen to God. Listen to the word of God. Amen. Somebody say, don't listen to everybody. Everybody ain't for God. Everybody ain't for the truth. Everybody ain't for the pastor. Everybody ain't for the church. The devil wants you to lose your testimony. Y'all hear me? Somebody say, the devil wants to lose your testimony. Amen. So be careful what you hear, what goes in your ear. Somebody say, be careful what goes in your ear. Amen. Because the pastor, can, the pastor knows when somebody's been talking to you. You might not know, but the pastor knows when somebody's been talking to you. First of all, you, 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 when the pastor knows, we, me and my wife call it snake bite. You've been poisoned. You start treating us differently. We know when you've been snake bitten. Amen. We have discernment, amen? Amen. God loves everybody. We love everybody, amen? All the devil wants to do is speak to you some kind of way to steal your testimony. I don't care who he have to talk about, amen? Amen. I used to have some help, but I don't know who he, he have to put in your life, amen? But the devil wants to steal your testimony. Don't let him have your testimony. Don't let him destroy your faith. Jesus is Lord of my life. Jesus is King of King. Jesus is Prince of Peace. Amen. And I love the pastor. Everybody say, I love the pastor. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see who, who didn't say it. Everybody say, I love the pastor. I love the pastor. Jesus, y'all went too quick. Let's start. What's this side? Everybody say, I love the pastor. They're using that side too. Everybody on this row say, I love the pastor. You ain't say nothing a little bit. <laughs> Everybody say, I love the pastor. 
And I can't see that sister. She got a mask on. See, she's covering her. Everybody on this side, I love the pastor. Well, I hope that's the truth. You've been in church lying. Don't lie. Did y'all say it over here? Do y'all love the pastor? Praise the Lord. And everybody say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. All right, we're getting ready to go. Everybody standing. Don't lose your testimony. Don't lose your testimony. Don't lose your testimony. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. But you got to hold on to your testimony. All right, come on. We're going to get ready to pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We bless you. We love you, God. We just want to share a little bit with them. That they should hold on to their testimony. That they should hold on, Father, to their work in God. When the enemy comes in, God, and he tries to take away your testimony, they have to say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. And the people loved not their lives even unto death. They held on to their testimony. God, I pray that the people here and the people that are watching will have power to hold on. God, if they don't have any food to eat, they'll hold on to their testimony. With pain racking all in their bodies, they'll hold on to their testimony. Troubles and tribulation come, God. They'll hold on to their testimony. They'll be like the man who wrote the song, It is well. It is well with my soul. Father, we pray for those that are watching by social media. We pray, God, for healing. We pray for deliverance, God. We pray, God, for strength. That they would hold on to their testimonies. Those that are backslidden, God, give them power to come back. To grab a hold to that testimony that Jesus is Lord. That at the end, God, they can stand and say, Hallelujah, I was faithful to the testimony of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We'll see you next time on social media. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Deacons, come on.